basically going to discuss about the laws of image formation by the spherical mirrors. That means whatever we are going to study uh, today right now, uh, we'll be applying that for the rest of the image formation and we'll see how does it actually works. And now you can simply see a bunch of diagrams over here. I have concave mirror over here and convex mirror over here. You can easily see. This is curved inward. All of these mirrors are curved inward. These are the concave mirrors. These are the cur curved outwards and they have a reflecting surface outward. So we have uh, considered it to be a convex mirror or it is called to be a convex mirror, right? Now, since I have labeled it uh, center of curvature and focus, center of curvature, focus and so on. Convex mirror has center of curvature and focus, center of curvature and focus. Like before starting, like we go to any other country to visit, we just have certain rules, rules and regulations that we follow, right? In the same way, while studying this, uh, this mirror, and uh, we'll be dealing with the some of the uh, laws and regulation that we'll be following, and uh, by which we will be taking on and further study of this mirror. Now, let's just jump on to the first one. What does this first one signifies or indicates? See, we have a parallel incident ray, right? Uh, like in the uh, uh, few basic terms when we talked about, I just told you about you have an incident ray and the reflected ray. In the same way, you have this incident ray coming parallel to this principal axis. You call this to be a principal axis. We have already discussed it. This is your principal axis, right? You have this principal axis, a parallel uh, ray of a light that is coming parallel to the to this principal axis after the reflection or after incidenting on the concave mirror it just converges towards a point on the principal axis that point is called the focus for example let's say i have another another set of parallel rays coming let's just consider this to be like this so it will converge at this point okay so you have a point at which the all the all the all the incident rays that are coming parallel to this principal axis will meet on the uh, on this principal axis or cut the principal axis at a point that is called the focus of this concave mirror. Now let's just come to the convex mirror. What how how basically it differs when a parallel ray of a light coming parallel to this principal axis we call it to be a principal axis coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection it diverges. It diverges but it appears to cut principal axis at a point that is called the focus of a convex mirror so what is the difference between at this point of time like uh, when you have a concave mirror you see that the light rays actually cuts but in this case you can see these dotted lines which signifies simply signifies that it actually tends to it doesn't but it tends to for example if you are standing over here and you uh, for example if you have a dot over here let's say you have a dot over here and you are seeing or, or observing this point on this convex mirror then you will see that it tends to come from this point this is called the focus basically this is the uh, and uh, yes in this case the focus is real focus why because because these light rays are actually meeting okay but in this case the light rays are not actually meeting but but you can easily see that it tends to meet okay like if i if i if i just draw uh, another set of ray then it will diverge in the way like this such that such that it tends to cut at this point which is called the focus of this convex mirror so this is the basic uh, first basic uh, basically the fundamental that we are going to use while studying the concave or the convex mirror we have a various set of uh, ray diagrams related to it and we'll be carrying on with that right now let's just come to the second way light follows the property of reciprocity what does that mean that means that if light behaves uh, behaves in a one manner from one direction then uh, from the other direction it will behave in the same manner as if it was behaving in this for example what i said the light rays coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection from the uh, from the concave surface it just cuts at a point on the principal axis that is called the focus now what happens if i incident if i if i uh, make the light incident or pass through the focus what happens it will just follow the old path it will after 
cutting the principal axis at a uh, at a point so called focus it after the reflection it will goes parallel to the principal axis in the same manner if we just see uh, in the case of a convex mirror at this point of time what i did is i just made the light incident on the focus that is a imaginary focus so i just made the light incident on this imaginary focus then after the reflection it will just pass parallel to the principal axis so in this case also you see a imaginary focus in this case also you see a imaginary focus Le uh, and let's just jump to the third one what does this say you see a light ray coming uh, or passing through a point which is called the center of curvature we have already discussed it is the center of the uh, sphere from which this mirror was the part of uh, you can easily easily recollect the previous information that we had this one like this was a sphere and we cut we just shaded one of its side and we cut a piece out of it and then it, uh, th this concave mirror was made so the center of this sphere is called the center of curvature we have already discussed that now what i do is i'll just make a light ray passing through the principal axis through a point so called center of curvature then after reflection from the concave surface it will rebound or retrace it its path it will not reflect it will not go here and there it will just retrace its own path let's just discuss it why does it actually behaves in this manner this i have already told you like like what actually happens over here is if you just draw a normal if you just draw a normal over here then angle i is equals to angle r this is what happens now what actually happens over in here like in the case of c you have a circle you have a circle and if you have a radius and if you have a tangent then this radius remains perpendicular to the tangent see now if you draw if you draw a tangent over here we can easily see that this will constitute the radius of this circle radius of this sphere and so it will be perpendicular uh, perpendicular to the surface and we know that angle i is equals to angle r now in this case when normal normal will lie on this only let's say just uh, let's just uh, make normal will be like this only so what is the angle of incidence it's zero degree because it doesn't form any angle now by the second law of the uh, reflection where angle i is equals to angle r you can easily predict out that if angle i is equals to zero then angle r has to be zero okay so it just retraces uh, retraces its own path now let's just jump towards this convex mirror what actually happens over here what i do is i'll just make a light ray incident on this center of curvature right when i make a light uh, light ray incident on this center of curvature which is basically virtual right uh, virtual yes and after after reflection it will again rebound or retraces its own path so these are the basic three fundamentals or or the uh, or the ways through which we will be deriving all the conditions regarding the concave and the convex mirror that will be discussed soon and now we are going to study about the formation of the image by the concave mirror see we can see a, a bunch of six diagrams over here these are the basic conditions for which the the concave mirror basically different differs very differently from uh, the position of the image we have categorized this into the six basic uh, basically conditions for it during your childhood days you must you might have seen or you have played this game that whenever you are changing the position of the uh, position of the spoon you see your image inside that spoon to be something very different let's figure out what actually happens see when an object is very far let's say when an object is at infinity when it is very far then we have we have already known how does a parallel waves or a, or a, sorry a, a basically a beam of a ray that incidenting on a concave surface how does it actually happens we have studied that it actually uh, cuts the principal axis at a point that is called the focus the same thing happens the rays from this uh, object at infinity goes parallel to the principal axis after the reflection it comes at a focus and you see the image is uh, basically of a point size so when you are holding a spoon far from you from for, uh, far from your face you see a very diminished image or a point size image so what are the conditions that we can deri derive from here what is the position of the object basically so you can say that the position of the object 
position of object is at infinity. We have placed the object at infinity basically. Now, at width, at what point you are getting the image, you can easily see that the, all the rays coming parallel to the principal axis from the infinity, that is basically from the object's, uh, object, uh, object's body after reflection cuts the principal axis at a point that is called a focus. So this is the point where the image is formed. So I would say or I would write, I'll just write position of image would be at focus. You can easily predict that at focus. Then what is the size of image? What is the size of image? You can easily see that the size of image is point size. So we'll write point size. Or we can just say that it is highly diminished one and the same thing anyways what is the nature what is the nature of the image what does the nature means basically uh, is it actually virtual is it actually real so how can you predict that so I already told you what kind of image is formed when the when the rays of a light are actually meeting you know that when the rays of a light are actually meeting then it forms a real image and when it is real it has to be inverted quite easy for that now let's just say it is real and inverted I believe these are the things that you can easily digest from this uh, from this whole bunch of diagram let me just again uh, make a review out of it you have placed the object at infinity the rays coming parallel to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the principal axis after reflection from this concave uh, concave surface it just converges at a point so called focus and the image is formed at a focus so the position of the image is at focus now uh, so it is image at focus now what is the size you can easily size uh, say that the size is a point size now what about the nature then you can easily predict that whole the bunch of uh, rays are actually meeting they do tend to meet like I said earlier, so they are actually meeting, so we call it to be a real image. And once it is a real, it has to be inverted, right? So these are the conditions, and from uh, this we can draw a whole bunch of a table. Let's just discuss whole the whole this thing one by one and do a comparative study, because uh, while doing a comparative study, things become quite easier and simpler. Now, let's just move towards this one. Now, first of all, the object was at infinity. Now this time, the object is at is that actually on the principal axis or we just uh, tell this or say this point to be beyond curvature now the actually you have brought your spoon quite closer but still it is beyond the center of curvature so we can just write the position we can just write the position of the object position of the object so where is the object it is beyond c Let's just write it for you. It is beyond beyond C. It is beyond center of curvature. So let's just uh, make it quite general. See, whenever you are forming an image or whenever the image is being formed on a mirror, the, the whole bunch of infinite rays comes out of that body that is placed or that object that is placed in front of that mirror. But for our study, it is quite easier and it's quite simpler and it is sufficient basically that we only take two rays, right? Uh, like if you have this tip, we are only taking two rays because that is quite convenient for us. Although there are number of rays coming from this whole bunch of a body, that is why the image is being formed over here. But we consider only two because that fulfills our that fulfill our demands. And basically, uh, this type uh, this this makes our study quite easier and quite convenient. Right now, now when the object is beyond C, so what we are doing is we are using two type two set of uh, two set of rays basically one that is coming parallel and the other that is coming. Uh, through the center of curvature that we have already discussed in the uh, previous uh, previous lecture that how actually uh, the set of rays while coming or incidenting on a concave surface actually behaves right now come to the come to this uh, this image uh, when the object is beyond C one ray is coming parallel you know that what happens to this parallel ray you know it just cuts the principal axis at a point that is at focus and it just goes like this now 
we have taken another set of ray because we at least we need two type of uh, rays to actually intersect each other so that we can easily predict where actually the image is being formed. Now, first set was that came through the focus. Now, the another is that the, uh, the, the light ray goes through the focus after incidenting, we know that it re retraces its path and it just goes like this. No, so where is uh, both these rays are actually meeting? It is at this point and at this point the image is being formed, right? So what are the things that we can easily derive from this point of uh, this, this set of a diagram? We can easily say that the position of image, where is the position of the image? Position of image. You can easily tell that it is between center of curvature and focus. So it is between C and F. The position of the image, image that is being obtained, it is between C and F, right? Now that you can easily predict out from this diagram. Uh, not, not a rocket science about it. Now the next thing we are talking about is size as usual. So you can easily see the size of the object and the size of the image is quite different. Image is quite quite smaller. So we just uh, we just write that it is diminished. Diminished. We form a very diminished image. Now, then what about the nature? You can easily predict this time. Though I have already told you, then you can just pause this thing and you can easily predict what is the nature of the image. It should be real and inverted. See, the light rays are actually meeting. They are actually meeting. That's quite cl clear from the diagram. Now, what about what about the other thing? So you can see uh, they are actually meeting. So we call it to be a real. It is a real image. Quite clear from the diagram. Huh? Now, one more thing that you need to know is, as I said earlier, that the real image is ordered uh, always inverted. So it will be inverted and you can easily identify from the diagram that this image is already inverted. So it's quite easy for us to write that it is real and inverted. So this is the second diagram that we have discussed. Now let's just move to the third diagram and let's just predict things out of this. What else we can say about it, right? Now I'll just write it over here. What are the things that we are uh, uh, that we are going to predict from this? You can easily figure out at your own what are the things that we can tell about this diagram. Now, when the position, basically the position, position of object, where is where is the object place? It is at the center of curvature. So it is at C. Uh, no doubt about it. We can easily see from the diagram. Now. What about the position of the image? Let's just write it. Position of image. You can easily see that when the object is placed at center of curvature, then as usual, you have a set of rays that is coming parallel. After reflecting, it cuts through focus. Now, what was the second law? It, uh, what was the second rule basically to discuss this? You know that when a light ray coming parallel to, uh, to uh, uh, sorry, uh, when a light ray coming or uh, cutting the principal axis at a point so called focus, then after reflection it just goes parallel. It's quite clear. We have already studied studied this. Now you can easily see first first set of array coming going uh, going parallel. After after reflection it just cut, cuts through focus and meets the another ray that is already moving from the focus to the uh, to, and after reflection going parallel and meets at this particular point and when we form this image you see that the image uh, the position of the image is at c only so you'll just write at c only now what about the size you can easily figure out you can easily figure out that at this point of a time the size would be same size right it would be same same size right now how about how about the nature then it's now at this point of time having been done both these condition we can easily predict that at this point of a time the nature would be what is the nature because it is inverted and actually the rays are actually meeting so it will be real and inverted 
real and invert real. Now let's just come to the fourth condition. What does this says, right? When the object is kept between the center of curvature and the focus, when the object is kept between the center of and the focus, what happens? The same thing, the parallel rays cutting the focus, coming here, another set of ray, uh, incidenting after reflection, cutting through the center of curvature, it rebounds, it retraces its path. You can easily see, it just, uh, it just going and after the reflection it's just rebounding and passing through the center of curvature right and after center of curvature we just meet at this particular point of a time and you can easily predict that the size of the image uh, the size of the object and the size of the image are different and the image is quite enlarged in this case the image is quite magnified or so called image is of large size right so uh, what are the things that we can take out from this this particular diagram just right position position of object what is the position of the object well, object is between c and f that is quite clear right so it is between c and f you have between c and f now what about the position of the what about the position of the image the image is beyond the c that's quite clear so position position of image it is beyond C. The position is beyond C. Now, let's just come to the size of the image. As mentioned earlier, what is the size? Size is enlarged. So, we'll just write it is enlarged. It is enlarged. Now, this time we are quite expert with that. How uh, you can easily say that the nature of image would be what is the nature of image? You can easily say that the nature of image is virtual and direct. No, it is not virtual and direct, it is real and inverted. That was to just to confuse you a bit. Real and inverted. Right? Yeah. Now let's just move toward this the fifth one. You 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 might be seeing a particular kind of a pattern over here let's just i'll just uh, let you know at the end of this this whole bunch of a diagram now when we're talking about this one this this particular point of a time when the object is placed at f when the object is placed at f we are doing the same thing a parallel ray after reflecting passes through the focus another set of array uh, after reflection just rebounds or retraces, uh, retraces its path cutting through center of curvature and going parallel. You see that both these rays are parallel and they will never be. At this point of a time we can easily say that the, object, the image is formed at the infinity. Now let's just say the position of the object. Position of object. What is the position of object at f? The object is placed at f. Quite simple with that. Now, what is the position? Position of image. Object image is at infinity. You see, the image is obtained at the infinity. Quite clear. Now, what is the size? Size. Now, when, at this point of a time, when the object is quite or we can say that the object is highly enlarged because it is obtained at the infinity. Now when you are placing a candle, when you are placing a candle, you just put a hand in front of it, you see a shadow on a wall. Now as soon as you, you just uh, make your hand far away from this candle, you see that the image at or the shadow at the uh, at the wall becomes enlarged and, and there is a point of time when the whole bunch of a hand just disappears and it becomes highly enlarged. We said that uh, you can just compare that to be that the image has achieved a size of infinity or we can just say that the image is highly enlarged. So you can just relate that thing over here. So size is highly enlarged. It is highly highly enlarged now how about the nature nature will be as usual nature is real and inverted 
that is the thing that we can easily predict out from it because it is uh, down the down this uh, down the principal axis you can easily say that this image formed is real and inverted now let's just move to the last part last part what does this says now when the object is between the pole between the pole and f between the focus and the pole when the object is placed another the same thing we are going to do the parallel set of array parallel set of array after incidenting or reflection from a reflecting surface it just cuts through focus and goes in this way in the same way another set of array incidenting on the on the on the reflecting surface after reflection it just retraces or follows the path such that it cuts through center of curvature only that is the point of a time when it will retrace its, its path if you make this cut over here it will not retrace it, its path and it will go somewhere else so we have just taken two those rays two of those rays we just uh, one is parallel cutting through focus another is just incidenting and coming or cutting through the center of curvature right now because these are going away from each other they are not going to meet over here so we'll just make a dotted line over here and we form the image is said to be obtained here now at this point of a time you can easily predict that the 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 nature of the thing has quite changed or in all those five diagrams you were seeing that the rays were actually meeting but at this point of a time the rays are not actually meeting but they tend to uh, they tend to meet which might have which might have uh, uh, poked you uh, that what kind of a thing has happened or you can easily predict the nature of the image over here let's just discuss it now if we just discuss the position of the object position of object now the position of the object is between p and f or f and p between pole and focus pole and focus now what about the position of the image position of image now the position of the image is is on the other side of the mirror so we can, we'll just write it other side of mirror side of mirror just writing it to be other side of the mirror now what about the size Here we can easily say that the size of the image is quite enlarged. So it is enlarged. Now, what about the nature? You can easily predict or figure out. I'll just write it down with a different marker. You can easily say that the image is virtual, right? How do you get that idea of the image being virtual? You, you have seen that these rays are not actually meeting but these are te these tends to meet right and hence it becomes virtual and you see we have already studied that the virtual image will always be erect and from this diagram you can see that the image is erect or upright so virtual and erect let's just summarize this thing and see the pattern what actually happens you see you have a mirror the object is far away you bring it closer you bring it more closer more closer more closer and in the same way we are just uh, doing the things see at infinity beyond c at c between f and c between f and c at f and between f and p you see we are just making the things closer to this image for example you have this mirror and you have this object you are just bringing it closer it is beyond infinity right beyond c at c between c and f at f and that is between f and p and you see that a bunch of images is being obtained now this was the position of the image position of the image through it was far away and then you bring it closer one by one now let's just see the size of the image initially point size then uh, a bit enlarged or you can just say it is small size point size small size 
quite uh, quite quite uh, bigger than this one right so the size of the image is also increasing so whenever you are bringing the things closer to that uh, concave mirror you see that the size of the image is also increasing so when it's far away it is point size it is uh, when you have uh, brought it quite closer uh, it becomes a bit uh, a bit uh, larger but still smaller than the size of the object right now what happens at c uh, this is the point at which the size of the image and the object becomes same right now what what about when it is kept between c and f it becomes enlarged point size diminished same size enlarged you see a particular set of a crack pattern happening over here now what about f it becomes highly enlarged or becomes or goes to infinite at this point of a time it becomes virtual right and one more thing that you can easily uh, figure out from this is that when the object is at infinity, you obtain an image at focus. What happens when the image is at focus? You obtain the object at a infinity. Sorry, you uh, object uh, you obtain the image at infinity. Quite quite a simple pattern. The principle of reciprocity. That means if uh, the light is behaving in one manner from one direction, then from the other direction it will behave in the same manner. That is what we have seen over here. Object at infinity, image at focus. Object at focus, image at infinity. In the same way, when the object is beyond C, it is between C and F. Then what happens when the object is when the when the object is between C and F, you get beyond C. You see a regular pattern over here. In this case, the object is beyond C, image is between C and F. In this case, the object is between C and F, and you get the image at uh, beyond C. Right? So you get a quite a, a, a regular kind of a pattern over here and by this comparative study you can easily uh, make out the whole bunch of these diagrams quite easily you don't have to mug up you don't have to uh, you, you know just uh, learn that uh, in that manner you can just easily understand or do a comparative study and you can easily figure out whole of this bunch of a diagram hope you have uh, got this quite clear and uh, these are uh, quite quite easier so you don't have to memorize it.